you ask me, you know, I, I, about it, I, I, I'm just a, a small part of, of that great tradition. But I feel like my teammates were guys like Harmon, uh, guys like Desmond Howard and, and Charles Woodson, uh, Jim Harbaugh, uh, all the great names of the past. Uh, and, and that's what I think makes us special. Jim, this is Kevin Drescher here again. And uh, since you've been through you know, pretty much the good and the bad with Michigan for as long as you've been with the university, does it seem like overall that the fans have a little bit too short of a fuse when things don't go the right I, way? I think some of them do, yeah. Uh, but I also think that some – we've been spoiled. Uh, oh, yeah. Over the years, I mean, let's face it, from 1968, that was Bump Elliott's last year. Uh, until last season, uh, Michigan did not have a losing year, uh, and and in 1984 they were even at six and six, uh, and last year was their worst year ever. And I think some to some degree maybe the Michigan fan base has been spoiled a little bit, where we felt, hey, you know, roll our helmets out there and we win. Well, it it it's not that way anymore. College football has become very competitive. The 85 scholarship rule has made a lot of people. Um, better and, and and a lot of good players go to different places and uh i think michigan fans the uh, i'll give you an example last spring over fifty thousand people showed up at the spring game mm-hmm. and i think that was an indication that you know what I mean, we need as fan as a fan base and i think that was an indication of it is to come out and support these guys that we've got to be with them we've got to you know we can't just come out there and expect to win uh, like we thought we have in the past. And I think uh, every player has rededicated to themselves to realize that, you know what, it's, uh, it's, 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 it used to be that when you walked into Michigan Stadium, it was worth seven points. Maybe it's not, that, maybe it's not worth that anymore, and that's something that everyone on that team wants to reestablish. And, and so I think the fans are part of that, and, and they understand it too. And I think they're going to make Michigan Stadium when you know it gets finished and the, re, uh, uh, the refurbishing and the adding of the suites, it's going to make it a very tough place for visiting teams to play. Yeah, I mean, I'll admit it. I'm a Michigan State fan at heart. And being that when Lloyd Carr was at Michigan, you know, through the really good years with him, there's a joke that always went around, you can't spell Lloyd without two L's. And as a State fan... I looked at Michigan fans. And I'm like, man, we'll take that guy anytime. You know that that just kind of shows or showed me how short of a fuse they had because well, Lloyd and, Carr and, had and a in lot many of ways, in many ways, that's true. And, and I think that Lloyd will be remembered uh, probably a lot, uh, and, and much of history will treat him kinder than uh, mm-hmm. some people did when he was actually coaching there. But his record is second to none, and, oh, yeah. and any university would love to have that record. But anywhere you go, where it has the tradition of winning. As like Michigan has, uh, you're going to get people who who aren't happy unless you know you win every game, and and that's the expectation that comes at Michigan. And Lloyd has said it before; uh, he didn't shirk that responsibility or that expectation. He actually embraced it, and you have to uh, if you're going to be there. I know Rich Rodriguez does. He he has said before. He said, "Look, uh, we're not going to be anywhere near where we want to be unless we are competing each and every year for a Big Ten championship and national prominence." And he said that, and he believes it, and and that's the expectation. And uh, Lloyd gave him that, and and every coach that's been there has been that same kind of a guy. And uh, and Jim Brandon Leopold here with you one more time. Um, just two last questions for you, and then I'll sure. let you go. Uh, the first one is. And and both my both of my parents and myself have all been wondering this. Suppose you go to a night game, let's say in in Happy Valley, and the game ends ten thirty, eleven o'clock <laughs> at night, and then you have to go on Sunday to Minneapolis, let's say, for a one o'clock Lions kick. How, how do you do it? Well, <laughs> you, you don't get much sleep. <laughs> Basically, what you do is uh, I will travel, for instance, on the charter mm-hmm. uh, with Michigan football. I'll come back on the plane. And if we get back at two in the morning, I will, uh, you know, go home, catch three, four hours sleep, and get a six, seven, eight, eight a.m. flight in the morning. Go to Minneapolis, get in a cab, uh, go to the Metrodome, and do a Minnesota Vikings Lions game. Uh, in the past, <laughs> it got to be a little problematic too because we used to tape Michigan Replay, the coaches' show, mm-hmm. Saturday nights after the game. Right. And uh, we don't do that anymore because uh, we, we we air that show now on a different night uh, with Coach Rodriguez, but. Uh, there were nights when I literally slept on a couch 
and uh, you know, got to the airport uh, for a 6 a.m. flight to Chicago, connect to Green Bay, uh, did a game, and basically got about an hour and a half of sleep on a couch after a night game in Minneapolis against the uh, against the Golden Gophers. You make, you make it sound so easy. And the, and the the final question, and I, and uh, I asked Old Tom Mesco this earlier. The final question is this: When that team comes running running out under the uh, Go Blue banner. And I don't know if you can hear it in the press box, but but when that fight song goes, which is by far one of the greatest college fight songs ever written, what what's the uh, what's the feeling that you get when when Hail to the Victors is is going on? Well, to this day, I still get tingles up and down my back. Uh, it is uh, it's a special place. It's a special team. It uh, brings out years of. You know, tradition, uh, the the excitement of the collegiate game, the support that you know the university and and the fans have given it, putting over a hundred thousand people in there for you know since the mid seventies, and and it just it, all of that kind of combines into this one uh, momentous moment uh, with that great fight song and this great traditional uniform. Uh, it just. Uh, it just gets you the goosebumps start uh, popping, and uh, it, it's that way at Michigan Stadium. I'm sure it's that way in other places around the country. But when you have a an investment in Michigan like I do, and like a lot of people that are there, uh, there's just no greater moment than uh, that opening fanfare of the victors mm-hmm. and, and the team rolling on the field under the Go Blue banner. Uh, and and uh, Jim, unfortunately, we have to let you go here because we're up against the break. But uh, I just wanted to say, on behalf of all my co-hosts here, that we certainly look forward to hearing you and uh, Frank Beckman uh, every Saturday, and uh, we're we're looking forward to you and Dan Miller every Sunday. Well, so. we got Dan and I are going to be hitting the uh, airwaves on Saturday. The Lions open yep. up against Atlanta for their first preseason game, yep. so kind of back in the saddle now. We so, appreciate it, and thanks, guys. Hey, no problem. Thank, Thank you. you. So much. I guess it's, I guess it's fair to say, go blue then. You can say that. Yeah, go I know blue. that your buddy there would like to say go green. <laughs> well, well, go green and go maroon and gold. Uh, oh, there you go. We uh, make it both that way. I say, j- just to let him know, though, you can't make uh, you can't make green without maize and blue. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Jimmy. I can see Appreciate we're going to have an argument on this one. <laughs> hey, anyway, take care. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. All right, bye-bye. University of Michigan color commentator and Detroit Lions color commentator Jim Branstadter joining us on Modern Rock 91.5 WMHW.